Politicians and pundits of both parties are divided on whether or not George Santos should be forced to resign. So let's start with the Republicans. <laughs> Here is Roger Stone responding to a clip of George Santos calling him a liar and a criminal. Let's pull up that message. It says this guy George Santos accuses me of lying. This guy has got to go. And this just makes me think of that meme of the two Spider-Men pointing at each other. Because <laughs> George Santos being a liar doesn't make you any less of a liar and a criminal. I don't know if that defense is going to hold up in court. But that was not all he had to say about George Santos. He also tweeted, it looks like, oh my God, I don't, I don't like the idea that Roger Stone is back on Twitter. But so it turns out this George Santos guy really is a fraud. Everybody knows that, <laughs> hashtag Roger Stone. Did nothing wrong. Again, I don't think that George Santos's lies negate in any sort of fashion your criminal activity, Roger Stone. And I don't think everybody knows that. But uh, okay, let's move on because Roger Stone is not the only person who's been uh, or attacking George Santos from the right. Although his attacks were more of a defense of himself. But uh, let's go to this New York Times reporting. Dozens of Republican officials in New York State, including four recently elected congressmen, urged Representative George Santos to resign on Wednesday in a fracturing of local party support for Mr. Santos. And House leadership seems unwilling to take action though. And let's get into why that is. Manu Raju tweeted, Kevin McCarthy won't join New York GOP leaders who are calling on Santos to resign. Says it's up to the voters. He has to answer to the voters, he told reporters. If Santos were to resign, it would set up a special election in a New York district that could flip to the Democrats. And I'm glad he included that in there because let's let's just be, be clear about it. Uh, Kevin McCarthy does not give a singular crap about the voters and what they want and the constituents and what they want because he continues to introduce you know bills and forward policies despite what, what the or what the people he's supposed to represent care about what their priorities are. So let's just dispel his defense of not asking George Santos to resign. But he wasn't the only one. Republican House Majority Leader Steve Scalise made similar comments on Tuesday. And here is Matt Gates defending Santos during an interview this morning. You have admitted embellishing your resume. You've acknowledged it. You've apologized for it. Some have said that you shouldn't be seated on committees for it. I would offer that if we didn't seat people on committees who embellish their resume running for Congress, we probably wouldn't be able to make a quorum in any of those committees. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more concerning that you think that every single person in Congress, you know, at least of the Republicans, is a liar. And I'd include quite a few of the Democrats as well. Um, but more about their conversation. Gates also asked Santos about the allegations of campaign finance fraud. And naturally, Santos dodged the question. And naturally, Gates didn't press him any further. Um, but some Republicans are going even further, if that's possible, in their defense of Santos from LGBTQ Nation. Representative Claudia Tenney said that it is Biden's fault because he sets a bad example for young people like George Santos. Santos is 34 and his trouble with the law, at least with Brazilian law, started well before Biden's presidency. Tenney said that ethics don't matter in politics because they uh, there are people like Biden, but didn't explain further. I'll just say George Santos is almost a decade older than me, uh, and I know not to lie. So I think that's a pretty weak, pretty weak defense of George Santos. And of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene also defended Santos in a similar fashion. Mark, are you surprised to see all of the worst eggs in the Republican Party rushing right. to this man's They, they all circle the wagons around this guy who's an utter fraud. I mean, this isn't just a lie. This isn't just an embellishment of the. I love how it's being recharacterized by Gates as just embellishing your resume, and and and, and justified by Gates as in like embellishment. So well, everybody in Congress embellishes their resume. Really? Okay, as you say, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the case or that's so good. But 
the notion that it's recharacterized that way really does disrespect to the reality. I mean, Santos is a, he's a train wreck from the standpoint of telling the truth. He's, he's virtually lied about everything. I mean, big lies. And remember, he ran for public office. I mean, so people are voting for this guy based on the BS that he's serving up like a short order chef. And the reason that it was never covered before is because these congressional races, as you know, deal with small districts so that the journalism associated with revealing the truth about people People, it's fairly modest. I mean, people are essentially just stenographers at that point. They jot down what's ever on the website. I'm talking about journalists, reporters, if you want to think of it that way, in these various districts. And, and that's just the way these candidates are represented. It doesn't bring enough uh, eyeballs or clicks to a situation to cover any of these congressional people in any kind of detail. So these lies all get into the outfield. And then you end up, though, with with a culture of running for office where these Congress people know that. And so Santos knows this and he knows that essentially he's gonna go unchecked. And so he makes up a complete life. I mean, this is a, you know, so his real life bears little to no reflection of reality. And I mean, now to see Republicans uh, again, uh, gather around him and defend it for the most part. As you say, there's a little bit of a split in the party. But uh, it's, I think it's laughable and it's shameful on some level. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked about how the Republicans are responding. Let's go to the other side and talk about how the Democrats are responding. And yesterday, Hakeem Jeffries gave a harsh rebuke of Santos. It's clear to me that um, George Santos is not fit to serve in the United States Congress. That's not my perspective, that's not a Democratic perspective. Now it's interesting because many of us are wondering, how did Republicans let this happen? How did you get behind someone like George Santos, who is so clearly a fraudster? I'll just add that Jamal Bowman gave an even harsher rebuke of George Santos while the uh, uh, Speaker of the House circus was happening. And speaking of Jamal Bowman, we might ask why Justice Democrats let Hakeem Jeffries, who is just a different kind of fraudster, get elected as House Minority Leader. But I'll save that for another day. <laughs> Let's get back to George Santos. Reuters reported that two US House Democrats filed an ethics complaint on Tuesday against newly elected Republican Representative George Santos after revelations that he made false claims about his background and work experience during his campaign. Representatives Richie Torres and Dan Goldman, who like Santos represent parts of the New York City area, asked the House Representatives Committee on Ethics to launch an investigation of Santos for failing to file timely, accurate, and complete financial disclosure reports as required by law. And you'd think that that wouldn't be controversial, but Democratic strategist and real life ghoul from fallout James Carville would disagree. <laughs> I think he's just a perfect instrument to expose the rot that is the modern Republican Party. And I think Congressman Goldman, all of them should just keep hammering away. And of course, they can't do anything about it because they have to have his vote and just use him, you know, as a political pinata and just keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and keep asking the Republicans, let's see your passport. What about this? What about that? I think he's more valuable there than he is gone. I really do. That is <clears throat> truly sick. I've got about a million things I could say about James Carville, but I will hold my tongue so I have time to give you an update about George Santos's response to all of this. Uh, Kristen Wilson tweeted this out. Representative George Santos just exited his office and said he'll resign if 142 people ask for him to resign. If 142 people ask for me to resign, I'll resign, Santos said while exiting his office. Five have so far, also why 142? And it is still unknown at how he came to that number. Mark, do you have any theories? Where no, I thought, I mean, I thought you, Ray, might have, a, have some insight into the numbers, like a, some kind of numerological thing. I do not know how you get to 142, but uh, this guy's not going away. Of course, if you were a Democrat, he would have been run out of town already, right? I mean, there's just a greater tolerance for everything on the other side of the aisle, but uh, uh, no, I, I, the Santos thing is utterly perplexing. I have no idea what's going through this guy's mind, but I know what's not going through his mind, resignation. No intention of pushing away from the table. No, absolutely not. And I have very little faith that even if he gets to that number of 142, 
that he would actually resign. I mean, this guy has lied through his teeth about every little thing in his life. He lied that his mom died in 9-11. He lied <laughs> that his grandparents fled the Holocaust from Ukraine. He probably also lied about his sexuality, or at least lied about being an openly gay man for 10 years because he was divorced from a woman in 2019. He lied about his race. I mean, this is a guy who has no shame. And I, I won't say that he has a strained relationship with the truth. He don't know the bitch. He's never met her. <laughs> He's never found a fact he can't lie about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I really don't think he'll resign. I don't know if he'll get to that number. I know he won't get to that number when it comes to Republicans asking him to because they need that seat like we highlighted earlier. They, you know, they need to maintain that power. They can't let it go to a special election and risk of Democrat winning in that special election. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.